Yes, uh, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Lucy Ochake, I'm with West Hartford Connecticut Continuing Education, and this is Tours by Lucy. I wanted to, first of all, wish everyone a very happy new year for 2018. Um, it is January, we're taping this in early January to be um, held in February. And by the time you see this, Continuing Ed will have their catalogs out to the homes. They will be sent out the weekend of Martin Luther King. And so you'll be receiving them by the time you, you view this. Uh, however, you'll have an opportunity to register online by that time, and I know many of you will. Uh, I have been with Continuing Ed for 21 years, uh, doing uh, scoring of day trips uh, with trips that I've created with the program. And I thank uh, Community Television for an opportunity to tape these shows and share this information with you. And uh, we will be offering guests throughout the year. We'll be talking about specific uh, venues and sites. So we may have some cooking demonstrations and a lot of creative things happening this year with community television. Um, I'm hoping to take the uh, camera on tour with me on one of my trips or two so that we can give you um, some real live great footage of the trips and the locations that we visit. Um, what I've been doing for the past 21 years is focusing on fun th things to do in your free time, which are the day trips that we have with the program. And I've been the group leader of some really fantastic trips and I wanted to share them with you for this coming year. I'm very excited about the year and visiting, revisiting old places and visiting new places and having the experiences with you and sharing new information with you about the great city of New York, great city of Boston. And uh, the first show, the first trip we have coming up in this coming year is the Boston Flower Show, which is something we were visiting after a couple of years. And it is held at the waterfront at the World Trade Center. And it is run by the Massachusetts Horticultural Society. And what they do is they put on a wonderful horticultural show with seminars, guest speakers, workshop, and you will be able to visit their wonderful garden marketplace to prepare for spring. And uh, it's a lovely, lovely show, and I have a nice group. This year it happens to be on St. Patrick's Day, so we can certainly celebrate that at the same time and find a great um, Irish site to visit in downtown Boston and have a pint or two, possibly. Uh, it sounds like a really great time. Uh, Boston really does it very well for thanks the uh, more the Irish presence in Boston. It's great. Uh, so we also will have time and go to Faneuil Hall Marketplace and Quincy Market, which is one of the most visitable places in America. Uh, it's a very popular place for both locals and tourists. There is a north and south market full of great shopping, great food hall. Uh, downtown is also very close to the Italian North End of Boston, which I lived for five years, so I can share some really great spots to uh, enjoy lunch, do some Italian food shopping, uh, have some of the best pizza you've ever had in your life right on Hanover Street. Uh, so we'll be doing that close to Haymarket, which is the farmer's market. So I'll be pointing out some great sites for you to visit um, re really in downtown Boston. On the next trip I have after that initial one this year is the New York City foodie trip. It's a trip I've been running for about a dozen years to New York City. And what we do is we visit Zabar's on the Upper West Side, which is the gourmet shop on the Upper West Side, which is in its about fourth generation of ownership. And they have wonderful smoked fish. They have wonderful coffees, wonderful selection of cheeses and olives. When you walk into the store, you are looking at a selection of over 600 cheeses from all over the world. And they have wonderful gourmet products. They have wonderful pastas. They have fresh uh, ground coffee you can buy. Uh, their own uh, in-house extra virgin olive oil from California is fabulous, as, as well as their Spanish olive oil. So it's really a great stop for the foodie, the cook, the aspiring cook. Uh, it is a very inspiring place, and it's just full of character. And there are also some restaurants and sites nearby that I uh, would point out to you that you may have some breakfast and um, a few other food shops in the area that you may also visit during your time on the Upper West Side. A fabulous place to visit. Then we head for lunch to the Little Italy and Chinatown section of Lower Manhattan, where there's a wonderful Italian grocery store, a gourmet store called De Palos. 
and we do some wonderful Italian food shopping at that store. And there's also a wonderful Chinese grocery store called Kaman, which has goods from all over Asia. So you may visit that and take home some wonderful goodies. And we really like to explore Chinatown for its produce markets, its fish markets. Um, it is just a, a wonderful chock full of bustle and hustle in Chinatown. A lot of commerce, busy commerce, wonderful bakeries. Um, I point out some great places. You may have dim sum in Chinatown. And uh, nearby also is uh, there is a Lombardi's, which is the first pizza place, uh, pizza parlor opened in, in New York City ever. Uh, still has the old-fashioned coal oven. So they really have a remarkable pizza. And there are also some delis and a wonderful donut shop nearby, which I point out called the Donut Plant. You may also visit that. So we have a wonderful, wonderful time in Little Italy. And also I've discovered in the last few years a wonderful Spanish grocery store that has wonderful gourmet goods, the hams, the cheeses of Spain. They have a wonderful tapas bar in back. They have sampling throughout the store and it's just a gorgeous stop um, on the foodie trip. So I'll be pointing out that to you. And do a little bit more emphasis this year on uh, the Spanish store. So I'll be pointing out that and sharing all this wonderful um, trip information with you. Uh, you always have time on your own during our trips and um, you can do some further exploring and coming back with perhaps some newer places to visit which we can share with others. So it's a great trip, it's a fun trip. If you're a cook or an aspiring cook, it's a great trip. The next trip we have after that is Boston on your own. And basically it is a trip where you can explore historic Boston uh, the historic Italian section in the North End, um, visit the waterfront area. There's the Institute of Contemporary Art right on the waterfront. There is a Museum of Fine Arts in the Fenway area along with the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum, which is left exactly as Mrs. Gardner wished. And you can visit the Back Bay. You can take a stroll of Beacon Hill, which is the oldest uh, section of Boston uh, in that downtown area, walk through Boston Common and um, take in a ball game. If there's a ball game, we will have time to do that. Um, you will have a really great time in Boston. I lived there for 10 years and we're happy to share all and any information for you to enjoy the city as much as I do. Um, on June 2nd, we will do my annual late spring trip to the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York City. And this is a trip I especially love because the Met has an extraordinary collection of Asian art, the largest collection of Egyptian art outside of Cairo. It has a wonderful Impressionist gallery with the most Monets outside of Paris. Uh, the American Wing has wonderful Tiffany glass. Um, there is an entire room from a home built from Frank Lord Wright's imagination and his expertise. Um, there is an amazing array of modern photography. There is a wonderful European gallery which has the old masters of Europe and just a, a fantastic day for art lovers. And during the time we'll be visiting there, there is also a roof garden where you may find a, a new modern installation and a wonderful view of Central Park. The museum is located at Fifth Avenue and 80th Street, so it's right in the heart of the Upper East Side. So you may also visit a couple of great gourmet stores there, a couple of great restaurants um, nearby that I will point out to you. But really, uh, what I tell folks who come to the Met is uh, come in, enjoy the galleries that you especially love, come back, enjoy it further. There's always a great exhibit. Uh, the Met covers over 5,000 years of history from the, every section of the world. So you will be immersed in some of the finest art in the world at the Met. It's a truly special trip and we leave at a very late time so we give you a lot of time to browse and really totally enjoy this museum. On June 23rd we will be visiting Newport, Rhode Island for my annual trip to the Newport Flower Show. I think this is my 18th trip to the Newport Flower Show and the theme this year is small cottages and that's kind of an interesting um, contrast to the huge mansions, uh, huge uh, dwellings that you see in Newport, but they also had a very creative time in decorating the small cottages. 
The Preservation Society of Newport County um, runs the flower show and does a fabulous job of it every year. They always have a great theme. And the show is always at the Newport um, Bellevue Avenue's Rosecliff Mansion. So you will see um, the Rosecliff Mansion in all its glory. Uh, you'll walk through, see the wonderful floral exhibits. And one of the previous owners of Rosecliff um, also actually invented the American Beauty Rose. So there's always a wonderful display of beautiful roses um, at the show, which are my favorite. And they have seminars and workshops that you might attend uh, right on the tent. They have wonderful upscale vendors, so you might be able to buy clothing and shoes and uh, spa products and paintings and all sorts of wonderful home um, decor goods. And just really a lovely time right on the waterfront. The backyard is the, is the ocean, so you have a nice um, view from there and just very picture worthy. And uh, so we're looking forward to taking you there. And in the afternoon, what we do is we head to the wharf area of Newport, which has all the wonderful seafood restaurants. And they also have the Newport Art Museum on the beginning of Bellevue Avenue. You may also visit that during your free time. There's also the Museum of Newport History at the Brick Walk, which is one of the uh, small malls near the visitor center. And if you want to take a cruise in Newport, um, if you'd like to take a walking tour, you can take a self-guided walking tour of the wharf area. And the visitor center is fantastic with information about things you can do um, during your free time. You can take a trolley around and visit a few stops. So it's really a, a wonderful, visitable, a uh, very welcoming, very engaging city to visit. So we really enjoy our annual trip to Newport every year. And on June 29th, uh, we are a baseball program. We'll be visiting Yankee Stadium in the Bronx to see the New York Yankees take on their ancient arch rival, the Red Sox. So this is something that uh, fills up very, very quickly. And I urge you, as soon as you see this or hear about it, to please sign up as soon as possible because uh, we always have full buses and waiting lists for this. And this is our one baseball trip this year. It is early, it is after school ends. And so you can take the family, take the, the children, the grandchildren, uh, just have a great time in the Bronx. We have a really uh, great uh, set of seats out in the outfield, the same seats we had last year. So you'll be able to get up and close uh, personal with the players while they're uh, throwing around the balls before the game. There is time to visit the Monument Park in the center field area. And there's also a terrific uh, Yankees Museum on one of the levels, I believe the main level, that you may visit prior to the game. But we go in enough time so that you could have a bite to eat um, and ease into the game and really enjoy. And uh, we always have a really fantastic time at any ballpark that we visit. So we especially will enjoy this trip, one trip we'll do this year. On July 7th, we will be visiting the Statue of Liberty and Ellis Island. And what we do at the Statue of Liberty is we give you a time to pass to visit the base of the statue and the museum. So you can uh, see the history of this wonderful lady who is gracing our harbor for over 100 years, see the history of how it was built, how it was brought here, and the importance of immigration. You will walk the immigrant steps through the Great Hall of the Ellis Island Museum. If your ancestors came from, it's very moving. You can do research on your ancestors at Ellis Island. You can take a guided tour of the entire island with the National Park Service. And when you visit the base of the statue, you have a wonderful view of the harbor and the beautiful buildings in downtown uh, Manhattan. So you will really enjoy that. And I hope you can come to this year. This is about our 19th year of doing this. And she's as beautiful as ever. Please do come. We have a full bus and usually a wait list for this also. So please, uh, if you are interested at all, please do come. I have folks who come on this trip for like the first time and they're just in awe. And I think you will be too. Um, on July 14th, we are heading to Plymouth, Mass to Captain John's Boats, which has a wonderful whale watch um, on a daily basis throughout the season. And we have had some wonderful whale watches where we've seen breaches, which was where they jump out of the water and that only happens in about 10% of the 
um, whale watches that we've been to or anyone has been to. And the wonderful, we have to give you some time to stroll Plymouth Harbor, uh, enjoy a lobster roll or a clam roll right at Woods Seafood right on the wharf. Uh, but we've always had a very successful whale watch when we've come. So I think we bring, we bring out the, the whales um, and their full glory, their various species of, of whales that we come across. And it's a wonderful picture-taking opportunity. Great day out in the water. Um, they do guarantee whale sightings that day. So we're sure to bring our uh, folks to a great whale watch. They do a very nice job for us. On October 13th, we'll be visiting, visiting the 9-11 Museum in Lower Manhattan. And you'll have a chance to visit the memorial uh, which is uh, the base of the tw two Twin Towers. We have a timed admission to the museum, and uh, you are able to explore the area further. In addition to the very moving experience of the museum, you'll be able to visit St. Paul's Chapel and Trinity Church, which is nearby, which ha also have meaning for the 9-11 experience. Uh, if you've not been to the museum, please uh, find time in your schedule to come because you'll come back with a enormous respect for those who um, were first responders that day and you honor those who perished that day. So we will be doing that in October. On November 3rd, we'll be visiting New York City again for what I call my second foodie trip. It's called the Further Foodie Finds. And what we do is we visit, first of all, the Union Square Green Market, which is the largest and biggest, um, best green market in the city. It is um, on Broadway and 17th Street, runs about three blocks. They have vendors come from six states. There is fish, there's meat, there's produce, there's fruit, there's wonderful garlic, wines. Uh, there are vegan products, there are bakeries. There's all manner of wonderful food shopping in uh, New York. Uh, some of the top chefs in New York do their shopping for the restaurants there on a daily basis. And I'm sure you'll come back with some new, uh, something that is new and exciting. There's always some new ingredients that you can cook with and you can always find the newest and the freshest there. And the producers are fabulous there. Uh, they're very engaging, very educational. They're very pleasant to work with. And you can just pick up a basket of your Thanksgiving vegetables that day, which is what I do. Um, and further shopping, which one of my true loves is, um, we have been in previous years to this wonderful outlet in New York called the Woodbury Common, which is uh, about an hour outside of Manhattan. It's about a two hour ride from West Hartford. And we'll be going on Black Friday, which is the day after Thanksgiving. So it's basically a shop till you drop trip. And I'm excited to be going back to this one because this mall, this outlet, has some of the best shops anywhere of any malls uh, that you will find anywhere. Some of the top designers in Manhattan only have one outlet, and it is there. So if you're looking for to do some serious shopping with serious discounts, this is a great place to go. They have off sex. They have Neiman Marcus Last Call. They have the designers. They have the basic, you know, great basic like J. Crew, and you know, wonderful one shop stop for your holiday shopping or for yourself. That is something that you could really totally enjoy. So we'll be looking to do pick up some bargains on Black Friday. Um, the ne the next trip is my classic first Saturday in December. New York City, day on your own. It is a day that's designed to come back later. So if you're interested in seeing a Broadway show, if you're in, interested in uh, spending time with friends, shopping till you drop, this is the day to do so. It is December 1st, and we have had full buses and wait lists for this for the many years that I've been doing this. And uh, this is something that you can take care of. Any of your holiday needs, if you wanted to visit the Radio City show that day, you're, you're welcome to do that. Uh, the timing of that is we leave at 8, get into the city about 10.30. Um, so any show after like 11.30, you're good to go. We have two stops. We have the Metropolitan Museum, and we drop off also at Rockefeller Center. So these are two stops that you may visit the Museum Mile, which is along Fifth Avenue. Uh, you can visit the Met. You can visit the Guggenheim, the Museum of the City of New York. You can visit the Frick, the Cooper Hewitt, the Jewish Museum. There's a slew of museums in the Upper East Side that you can visit 
uh, on that day, which are close to the Met. And in Rockefeller Center, of course, you have the major department stores in New York City. The holiday uh, windows are beautifully decorated for the holiday season, so you can take in a show and do wonderful holiday things in the city, and we always enjoy it. It's a very hectic day. It's the busiest shopping day in Manhattan in the entire year. So, you know, you can shop galore, and uh, we've, had, we've had a great time uh, every year we've done this. And the last trip that we have this year, that we have scheduled right now, is December 4th, which is our annual Radio City Music Show, which features the Rockettes, Santa, the Living Nativity scene at the end. Our shows have gotten rave reviews over the years. We've had folks who have been only once with me, and they've really totally enjoyed it, and they were totally um, enthralled by it. So this past year, they they updated every couple of years, new costumes, new songs, but basically the same basic show stays, which is very enjoyable for the family. Bring everyone you can. This trip signs up very, very quickly, so we expect that again this year. We will have more information in the spring uh, for this particular trip, uh, probably around April or so. We'll have um, the seating arrangements. We have had the same great orchestra seats the last couple of years and expect these seats or better this year, so it is well worth coming into New York. We give you time on your own to have some lunch before the show. Uh, the door opens an hour before the show. We leave right after the show, so it gives you a really nice opportunity to see the holiday tree, do a little shopping, and enjoy the holiday show. And what I also wanted to mention is throughout the year, if you register with the program online, you can certainly get updates about trips that are being added. We are currently working on a trip to Hyde Park, New York, to visit the Culinary Institute of America. We have had trips there every fall. We do not have a date yet. As soon as we do, we will share that with you. We are certainly working on that all the time. And we'll also be visiting this year the recently renovated Vanderbilt Museum and Home, which is in Hyde Park. Um, they took the latter part, the best part of last year, to do a total upgrade of the house. And it is a Frederick Vanderbilt house. He is one of the lesser known Vanderbilts who basically did not inherit a pile of money, went out and became a successful businessman on his own and built this fabulous home in Hyde Park. Our lunch at the CIA will be at the Caterina de' Medici restaurant, which is its own villa right on the campus of the Culinary Institute. We will pick a wonderful Italian meal for you to have prior to your tour. So if you haven't been to the CIA, um, it is a great meal. We have visited the American Bounty and this Caterina de' Medici and have had great meals, great experiences. They also have a bakery there where you can bring home some fresh baked goodies and uh, so that will uh, extend your enjoyment of that particular trip. So I wanted to share with you my personal uh, email which is toursbydesign at gmail.com. It's T-O-U-R-S-B-Y-D-E-S-I-G-N at gmail.com. And I will give you my cell number, which you can reach me at any time, call or text 860-414-1024. And that's to answer any questions that you may have about the trip. Call me at any time or text me. I return calls within 24 hours, so you will have prompt, accurate information about our trips. Or you may call Continuing Ed at 860-561-6900. They are open from 8 to 4.30, Monday through Friday, They'll be very happy to answer any questions you have or refer them to me, and we will answer them accurately. So I encourage you, if you see a trip, sign up for it early so it guarantees that it does run. Continuing Ed is very generous with uh, the attendees, with information. We give you a full uh, accounting of the trip and what's going to go on that day. I'm a very experienced tour guide. I love doing this, sharing the information and meeting all of you who'd like to go on these trips. So please call me, email me, call the program. If you have suggestions about places you like to go, I'm constantly doing research about places that would be worthwhile for me to group lead for. Um, we have a thriving, vibrant program that's always looking for new ideas. And the educational trips that we run, I think, are very beneficial to the town. You do not be, need to be a resident of West Hartford 
to take these trips. You can live in surrounding towns. I've had folks come from all over, so you're very welcome to. And the rate for out-of-towners is the same as the residents, so please be uh, assured of that. Uh, we have very well-priced trips, and I think you will enjoy them and hope to see you on these trips. I will have an update next month for this uh, schedule. We may very well add some more, so I look forward to that. And thank Community Television for taping this and look forward to future trips. Uh, be on the lookout for more shows. Thank you so much. Take care.